Okay, hi YouTube. Uh, I'm Philip Meyer from runningserver.com. Uh, you might know me from the sketch that's usually showing winch stuff. But today I want to show you something very, very special. Okay, turn it around. So, a laser. It's an ALC60 laser from American Laser Company. And I will give you a short walkthrough. So let's take this apart. This is a cooling device, by the way. With a big, huge fan. Which is sucking the air through this hole and blowing it out uh, backwards. Here we see uh, the laser tube itself. Um, we take this cover off. Okay, uh, I suspect you already know how a laser works and what's the physical principle behind it. Uh, basically, in this laser, we have uh, two mirror plates, like it's, it's a classic design. Uh, in the laser diode, the dials it's the same, but uh, uh, this is a discrete unit where you can actually see every part of the laser itself. Um, the mirrors are mounted in these plates, one at the front and one backwards, and uh, they are aligned with three screws. They have to be perfectly aligned um, to each other so that uh, the, uh, the light can reflect back and forth inside the tube. And uh, now let's see what we got here. I guess it's. I guess this is uh, the cathode. Uh, it's a heated cathode. It's a, it's a tungsten wire. Uh, you can see uh, the heating current is coming, uh, is entering here and coming out there. Uh, it's, uh, these are the connectors for uh, for the cathode, and around all around is a, a, a cooling a ring of cooling fins. I have cooling fins as well here and here and here and a heat uh, detector as well. It's a simple uh, beam metal uh, heat detector which uh, prevents, uh, prevents overheat or overheating of the tube. And this one is um, very interesting. This is the uh, uh, the connector where the tube was filled with argon. It has to be uh, a very specific, precisely aligned uh, pressure and very clean argon gas. You don't want to have any dirt or other gases in there. It has to be perfectly clean and it has to be the right pressure. It's very, uh, a very difficult task to give a tube a refill and this tube, I guess, actually got a refill, maybe from HP Laser here in Germany, because uh, this tube had an HP Laser label on it when I got it. And I think this tube must be in a very good condition when it, uh, when it, uh, when the gas uh, were worn out, but the tube itself was in good condition, so they gave it a refill and resold it. Um, here we have uh, also the uh, PCB, which controls the ignition of the tube, it's a high voltage pulse which ignites the tube and when, it, when it's once igni ignited a uh, uh, high current is flowing through the tube. It's about 80 volts I think but, but it's running on a high current. You might, uh, if, if you compare to uh, the helium neon laser types which run on high voltage and a very low current, these tubes are run on high current and they get, oh, they get incredibly hot so they have to be you have to ensure continuous cooling otherwise you might destroy the tube um, yeah and there's something important to know about these tubes they, con uh, they consist and they do not contain they actually consist of beryllium oxide which is a very dangerous and very high toxic material um, but uh, it's safe as long as you don't crack or uh, green the tube, it's perfectly safe. You also don't want to touch it because acids from the fingers might uh, 
dissolve some of the beryllium uh, oxide and that might be toxic as well. But as long as the tube is in good condition, there's absolutely no, no danger. I always store this tube next to my bed. Uh, I really trust in the great work that American Laser did at this time. The age of this laser is about uh, 30 years, I think. Let's move around. Here's the label. Uh, it's 78, I think. 78. Yeah, that's probably, uh, pretty old. Uh, here we have some. Um, we have a control panel with some controls on it. We have a, a power LED and an overcurrent LED. Um, and we have measurement outputs. You can measure uh, the uh, laser power, which is disabled currently because the measurement uh, circuit has been removed. But you can measure the tube current, which is sometimes important to monitor. Uh, because it gives you some information about the condition of your tube. You have to be very careful, about the, uh, you have to take care about the condition because um, if you run, you have to continuously run your tube um, because it's it slightly begins to suck air, the pressure inside the tube rises and then it won't ignite anymore. So you have to run your tube a few times a year at least. Some folks say you have to run it once a month. I do not do it so often, only sometimes, uh, like Easter and Christmas. Uh, here's the huge power supply, which supplies the uh, tube with current. It uh, has a transformer. You might suspect that it is an anode transformer, uh, but it's, that is not really true. It's a, it's a step-down uh, step transformer because this unit is running on 115 volts because it's a, a, it's a, a device from USA. It's uh, originally used in Xerox uh, laser printers in the USA. And that is why uh, these units always have 115 uh, volts power supply. And so you always have to use this crappy transformer, and that's actually the heaviest part of the power supply. This power supply was once a gold box uh, power supply. They call it gold box because it has this golden uh, finish. And it's basically aluminium with, with a golden finish on it. That's why uh, Fox call it gold box. Uh, but uh, I wasn't really satisfied with that. Um, I needed a uh, some more advanced power supply. It basically is the gold box, uh, the, the smaller Marlin gold box uh, power supply, but with a few modifications it's cleaned because all these power supplies, because they were used in laser printers, uh, so they collected a lot of uh, toner dust, so I had to clean that uh, first. And this one has an ILDA input and an ILDA output as well. You might think ILDA input, ILDA output, uh, no AOM here, and uh, why is that? That's, um, my idea was um, to uh, embed a, a standby circuit. If you, maybe if, if you switch your laser uh, output card off, if you have no laser, no protection, the power supply detects that, and it's, um, uh, lead, it's driving the laser into standby mode then. Um, by this you can prolong the tube uh, life. Um, it's done all, it's all automatic uh, all, it's done all automatically. Uh, you don't have to care about it, you just enable it and um, it cares uh, for themselves. If you power up your laser gear again, run your laser show, um, the laser is coming up again. Um, so it's just play one ILDA frame and then it's uh, wait a few seconds, then it's up again, and then you can run your show. Uh, okay, it has, uh, it's completely remote controllable VRS233. It's called LMT here, local maintenance terminal. And we have uh, emergency power off. Inside the emergency power off, uh, let's see it. Um, you uh, have a key lock. This is actually by the authorities here in Germany. 
uh, they want you to have uh, emergency power off and a key lock on every laser. Otherwise it would be illegal, uh, at least in industrial uh, assemblies. What you do at a private person here, it's no one cares about. But I take it really serious, so we have this key lock and uh, the emergency power off as well here. And we have simple buttons. It's just a, a, a simple push button, so you can switch it on and switch it off. You don't have to care about uh, the power up uh, sequence and the power down sequence. It's all automat uh, done automatically in the power supply. Um, the laser is safely powered up and safely powered down. Um, so no worry about that. Because on an argon laser, it's not just like a laser point. You press a button and the laser is on. No, no, you have to power it off. Uh, you have to power it on a on a certain amp level, and then you have ri to rise the, the power um, slowly to the level you want to uh, the laser to operate on. And for it's done backwards um, when you uh, shut down the laser. You have to lower the current slowly because you don't want to uh, pr provoke any um, material uh, uh, the um, you don't want to stress the material too hard because by heat it, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, material is uh, working against each other <laughs> I don't know the exact term in German uh, in German we would say Spannung, uh, Materialspannung uh, okay, you want to avoid that uh, okay now I think it's time to power this baby on. So we put it back in place. I will omit screwing it. I think this is stable enough. Oh yeah, hopefully, hopefully. So ensure proper cooling. I have careful look at this. It is, it is aligned perfectly. Ah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Now let's take a look here. It's aligned. Very good, very good. So then we plug it in. It's using normal uh, Molex PC <laughs> connectors. Okay, I don't think that it is a good idea, but I think nobody one will plug a CD-ROM drive or similar stuff here. It has basically it has an interlock. Uh, if you forgot the fan assembly to connect, then the laser won't start. So we make sure that it is properly connected. Power is on. Okay, okay, okay. Then we begin with the power up sequence. So oh, and the boots. You see in it sequence. Maybe you can hear that sound. Can you hear that? This is uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but this is a motor point tensiometer that is uh, currently testing itself. Um, the thing is, when you want to optimize the uh, uh, Marlin World Box power supply, you have to be very careful because um, inside you don't have a, a no real ground. It's connected to 200, 230 volts or something. Um, so if you use normal digital potentiometer, for example, it will explode and ruin your power supply entirely. So. <laughs> Don't do that. Always have sure proper insulation. If you have to use a digital uh, potentiometer, then you want to isolate the CSS using optocouplers. So we are now ready. The little red dots indicating that the power supply is ready now. And we can push the start button. And now I warn you, it's getting loud. So it's starting now. Fan assembly is running. What now happens is the um, cathode will heat up, and after a certain amount of time, the power supply will start the ignition sequence. So we wait for that, the ignition sequence. Maybe we can actually see it here when the overcurrent LEDs giving a light. Slightly uh, a flash. It might take a, a few seconds. So, hmm. nothing happening here. 
if you would connect the terminal to there so, so, so we could uh, see uh, what the power supply is doing but uh, I have omitted it yet uh, this now oh yeah let's saw it flashing so the laser is on it's powered on and here we have the laser dot okay it's still in the warm-up phase oh, don't look into the beam Ah, it's looking, on the camera it's looking brighter than it really is. The laser has a power of about, if you really ride it hard, then uh, it can run at about 80 to hun even 100 uh, milliwatts, but that's all. You better run this at about 50 milliwatts, I think. You don't want to stress the tubes. These lasers are, um, Actually, today they are more collector's items than a laser you actually want to use. Modern laser projectors uh, have uh, all uh, are today based on uh, diode lasers. Nobody is using argon lasers today in this age. You don't want to use a unit that is uh, sucking uh, <laughs> energy as hell. And uh, so now I think it's um, powered up. It's 30% of the pulse, not the milliwatt percent. We can switch the increase, the, the push the increase button and it will increase the power now. Okay. Don't wear watch when you perform this. These lasers are under toys, they are actually very dangerous. So now we at uh, 39% uh, of the wattage. We can increase it once more. Yeah, you can see the beam slightly. The camera performs better image than the human eye. And you, I don't know if you know, but these lasers they are run on multiple lines, that means they are actually not a single color. You normally would expect that a laser is running only on a single wavelength. This unit actually runs on multiple wavelengths. It runs on a green one and a few blue ones. Oh, 49. You don't want to rise the power Z in uh, that, uh, that short time want to give the tubes a chance to heat up slowly it's blowing out oh it's warm air yeah. it's not hot it's slightly warm on this surface oh, it's not really hot but I think it's about 60 degrees or so so here we can see um, the, the transparent ends of the tube lightning it's basically straying light that's coming out here. It's not a uh, part of the uh, arc in the inside the tube. And yeah, and here we see uh, a bit uh, on, on the backside mirror that's coming a bit of light out, but not much. The most power is emitted here at the front. So, I think I will come to an end now. I will run this for I think half an hour because it didn't uh, run for a long time to burn out all this oxygen inside the tube and to uh, yeah we don't want to get uh, this tube uh, broken by uh, yeah by just uh, letting it uh, lying around in the cupboard we actually want to keep our tubes fit so thank you very much so far, goodbye, take care.